Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbs here, and today's focus is on the neuron. So what is a neuron? Uh, it is the main functional unit of the nervous system. Uh, it has the ability to send and receive messages in the form of electrical currents called nerve impulses. Uh, kind of interesting to think about. Your, your body actually has the ability pr to produce electrical currents. Um, think about your house. It works on electrical currents. So those electrical currents that work in your body are called nerve impulses. Here I have a diagram of, of a human body. We have the brain up here that plays an important role in the nervous system. Think of that like the boss. It controls every aspect of the nervous system. We have the spinal cord here, and all these little things that are shooting off of the spinal cord are little nerves, which will pick up sensory things such as um, well, how it feels outside, the temperature of how it feels outside, uh, uh, or, or maybe it's too hot, maybe too cold, or, and it also has the ability to make your muscles uh, flex and fire. Here I have a diagram of a neuron. This is a really small thing. Uh, but however, this thing actually has the ability to do a lot in your body. Let's go ahead and explore it a little bit more. Um, so here I have a neuron. You can see that this part over here looks a little bit different than this part over here, and this part here in the middle uh, looks a little, a little bit different than all these other parts. So let's talk about uh, actually what each part of these, these, this part of the neuron is. The first part I want to talk about is the cell body. You can think of that sort of like the brain of the neuron. It controls, uh, it controls the neuron. It contains a nucleus and is responsible for processing incoming nerve impulses. So all of this right here is part of the cell body. And that is responsible for taking in impulses, which are going to come in through these parts right here, and deciding what to do. If we uh, decide that we want to keep the nerve impulse flowing, we're going to shoot it out the back over here. Next thing I want to talk about is these things called dendrites. You can think of those as the receivers. They are little finger-like projections from the cell body. They pick up messages from other neurons, and those messages are, again, once again, in the form of nerve impulses. So each one of these little finger-like projections right here is a dendrite. It has the ability to pick up nerve impulses or messages from other neurons and decide what we want to do with that. The axon, you can think of this guy as like the sender. This whole region right here is called the axon. It is a long projection out of the cell body and this is actually where uh, a nerve impulse is going to be sent through and continue on to wherever it needs to go. Schwann cells, you can think of those as like little insulators. They are little sausage-like cells that surround most of the axon. They insulate the axon and help the impulse uh, by making sure electricity is not leaked out. Uh, they contain a thing called myelin, which is a type of fat. So if you think about it, uh, fat is a type of insulator. So this cell right here, on the axon itself, this is a Schwann, or Schwann cell, and this contains a lot of a, uh, a fatty type substance called myelin, which is actually going to act as insulator. You can sort of think of that how uh, you have you have insulation over wires in your house. If you didn't have those, what do you think would happen every time you turned on the lights and touched a wire? Or your TV, which has insulated wires every time you touch the, the wire, what do you think would happen? Well, you get shocked. Um, so myelin is covering up the axon to make sure that, that uh, electricity doesn't flow where we don't want it to. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is these nodes of Ranvier, they're called. Uh, these are gaps in between Schwann cells. So this little thing right here is, is a node of Ranvier. They are areas that allow for ion exchange to help polarize a cell. What does polarize mean? Well, uh, polarized means that it, it, it has the ability to um, make create a charge. So each cell in your body actually has a charge of negative, about negative 70 millivolts. So that's kind of weird to think about, that your cell actually could measure how many volts each cell has. Uh, it's about negative 70 millivolts. That means that at any given time, your cell could fire off a nerve impulse that would be equivalent to about 70 millivolts. Uh, so you have trillions of nerve cells in your body. So at any given time, your body has to has the ability to produce massive amounts of voltage. Uh, kind of weird to think about. A, a cell phone, which is, uh, I'm going to draw over here. 
You know, it's got the, the buttons here in the bottom, beep, boop, beep, boop. Let's say that that's a cell phone. A cell phone runs on about three volts of power. And you, you're, you, each cell in your body has, has the ability to produce up to 70 millivolts of power. So you can actually do some simple math and use the metric system and figure out how many nerve cells it would actually take to power the cell phone in your body. It's a little bit weird to think about, but um, it actually wouldn't be that many to compared to how many nerve cells you actually have in your body. So your body actually runs on a lot of voltage at any given time. So anyway, these things right in, in the middle here, they are things that allow for ion exchange to help polarize a cell, which will actually, the, the, the different concentrations of ions across the node right here will have the ability to uh, produce that nerve impulse, which we need. And the last part here is an axon terminal. That's the end of an axon, which usually will split up into several different parts. So this whole thing right here, this is a axon terminal. Uh, an axon terminal attaches to a muscle gland or another neuron. If it's attached to another neuron, the nerve impulse will continue to the next neuron most of the time. If a muscle or if it's attached to a muscle or gland, it will stimulate that muscle or gland to do work. What does that mean? Well, well, uh, think about just snapping, making a snapping sound. You are using your muscles to snap. Uh, that happens because you are sending a nerve impulse and those axon terminals, the end of the axon is attached to part of your, um, part of the muscles and it causes those to contract and allows you to snap. Briefly, I'd like to talk about actually the nerve physiology, the whole thing, what's happening all in all. So we're going to have a message. The message is in the form, once again, of a nerve impulse. It's going to be picked up over here by the dendrites, and the cell body is going to decide what to do with it. If we believe the message is strong enough and important enough, we are going to send it down the axon this way over to the axon terminals, where these, these axon terminals are going to bind with either another axon, another, uh, another neuron, or uh, a muscle or a gland. So um, the total... All in all, a nerve will a nerve a neuron will work from left to right this way. We're gonna pick up stuff here. So this is gonna receive the messages. The axon over here is gonna transmit the message. And the axons over here are gonna send the mess. The axon terminals over here are gonna send the message to either muscle. Uh, a gland or another neuron. So anyway, that uh, concludes uh, the neurons, and I am going to sign off, folks. Again, this is Mr. Herbst. Have a nice day.